Bite sell deal analysis. I want um, now. This should say markup. I stand corrected by our wonderful cowboy John Wayne. I want a markup of 20%. And we're going to talk about all the cost categories and all the things that you need to think about that um, bought for 100 grand, sold for 200 grand, refurb costs of 30. My initial naive expectation is I've made 70. No, baby, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of costs in there. We talk about that in great detail because possibly you, like me, on your very first project went bought for, sold for, look at me, I'm rocking it. Oh, oh, because <laughs> I forgot about all the costs on my very first one. It was, a, it was an exciting piece of disappointment and I don't want you to have the same thing. <laughs> So we talk about that and we're doing that next weekend. So, and then buy to keep, whether it's an HMO or a shared house or a single let, plan B, always have plan B. Because the one that you don't have plan B on is the one that's going to not sell, of course. Because why would it not? So gross yield. And in your Facebook group, I have put my own spreadsheet there for you guys to have a look at. Remember I said that Greg and Tanya presented back their portfolio to me and on the top one, they'd forgotten to delete my property. So I was like, oh, it's marvelous to see that you own Brixton Road in Bristol. Ah, we shared owners. <laughs> and congratulations for buying a house with an aluminium <laughs> roof. Well done, guys. <laughs> So gross yield is a percent, uh, gross yield after refurb costs. And really I'm looking for you to have 10% and above, please. Net monthly profit, return on capital employed. Really, we want, you to have in, we want you to have a negative number, which is infinite return on capital employed. At that point, you're like, happy days, all my money is back out. Or if the money is left in, which we discussed yesterday, how long are you happy to leave that money in for? For me, it's just my own thinking. If it makes a thousand pound a month, up to 24 months if it makes 1,500 a month net up to 36 months and I'm kind of you know I'm still like a little two-year-old with a tiara being a bit stampy at that point but I'll, I'll just about accept it equity goes onto your balance sheet you can't uh, you can't eat it but you are strengthening your wealth and that's rather nice but one interesting <laughs> side conversation we had at the last session is when you say take all your money out yeah you take you can't when you can you take all your money out but no more yes can you explain so my rule of thumb is look at how much the thing costs you to buy, to, to, to buy, to buy with all the fees, to refurb, to refinance, you know, the full cost, every penny. Now the temptation is to continually think, look at me, I got the Lamborghini, I'm taking all this money out. Guys, you're living on debt. So my rule of thumb is to take, I can, I allow myself to take all the money out of a property that I ever put into it and then I have to stop. And it turns a different color in my spreadsheet and it says, hands off, Susie. Because up, uh, anything above and beyond that is living on pure debt in my humble opinion. So I would suggest you want to give yourself the same rule. Because do you know what? When the property goes up 10% a year, as it has done in Bristol, that is juicy on a <coughs> sizable portfolio. And there's no point believing your own hype, you know? It depends on your end goal. But would you generally wait until the money's available to take out in one chunk, or would you say, well, I can take 10,000 out now, and then the next 20,000 out in a couple of years' time? It depends how you're going to take the money out. If you're doing a further advance and there's like a 300 pound survey fee and that's all you need to do, maybe you do that. But normally, if you're taking money out and there's additional fees, it's not worth it for 10,000 pounds, because you look at what's the cost of capital, and as soon as you're starting to pay fees for 10 or 20 or 30 grand, it's kind of not worth it. So it just depends. It also depends on what I want to buy. It depends on how urgently I need it. It depends on whether once again, yet again, Susanna's agreed to buy another house before she's got the funds in, which is what I've done on every single property I've ever bought. Um, it just depends on the whole scenario, really. It also depends on your <coughs> thought process on PESL, political, economic, social, legal, technological, environmental. So my reading, my uninformed amateur reading is money is going to get harder to bring in because uh, world markets are changing, China is changing, are the banks getting more or less risk averse? You know, I could be wrong, but I anticipate and have been thinking that money is going to be harder in 18 months. So do you know what? I'm refinancing my portfolio now to build a war chest now. That's just my reading. What, don't know what you think. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, great.